With the new logout timer feature in RuneLight comes endless AFK possibilities. Prioritizing your work or spending time with your e-girlfriend doesn't have to be a thing of the past anymore. Just head over to the RuneLight configuration and under logout timer, up it from either 5 or 10 minutes, it's 25 minutes. I'm going to show you some great AFK methods for all those non-combat stats in the game. And if you want a guide on AFK combat stats, check out my part 1 guide on my channel. And the classic great room crafting activity that's AFK is mining these dark essence. You do need 77 room crafting, and this is to craft blood runes. So once you have one full inventory, you just click over here, given you have the agility shortcut, and cross over that. We're going to head over to the dark altar. All I have to do is click once. Your character will head over to it. Once you're at the dark altar, you're going to turn your essence into dark essence, and just click south of the dark altar. To make this as efficient as possible, you're going to do one trip exactly how I just did it. And then you're going to chisel all these. Do you need a chisel with you? Chisel them all into dark essence fragments. You see I have 108 of them. Then you're going to go back, mine it again, head back to the altar, turn them into dark essence blocks, and then dark essence fragments again. So essentially what you're doing here is you're doing two inventories in one. We're going to create some blood runes here, with the fragments, and then we're going to chisel all of these and do the same thing again. So you just head back down to this agility shortcut right here and just chip away again, go to the altar, come back, chip away, go to the altar, and then go to the blood altar. So it's a bunch of just back and forth, but it is pretty AFK. You will get just under 10,000 XP in crafting and mining. And as you see here, from those two trips, 212 blood runes is gonna be close to 65K in profit. And if you're looking for rune crafting that's a little less AFK, obviously you're going to be going to the Guardians of the Rift minigame. It's a little bit of fun. It can be a little AFK, but not as much as obviously crafting blood runes. But again, if you don't have that, this is your best option. Now, unfortunately, there's really no way to AFK construction, but one of the best ways to get passive XP in construction, I guess you would say, is picking up the long bones and the curved bones. So if you bring them over to Dorgashin and you come to Barlock, you can exchange your long bone or curved bone for 1,000 coins or 2,000 coins and 4,500 construction XP for the long bone and 6,750 XP. For a curved bone so that's a great passive way to train construction long bones are usually dropped from a rate of one in 400 and the curved bone you're looking at about one and five thousand i believe so he will want me to sell these to him press ok and for those three we just got thirteen thousand five hundred construction xp now, if you don't enjoy rooftop courses, you can come to Brimhaven and pay the captain to go down the ladder to the agility arena. Now, once you're down here, you can play agility the proper way and tag the ticket dispenser for 270 XP and then go AFK until a new one spawns in a minute. Or, you now as you see, someone else is actually doing this method with me. But all it is is you're just going to click on the same spot with detached camera on. So your camera does not move. If you have that off in rune light, then your camera moves angles every time. So you have to move your clicker. I guess if you have an auto clicker, I don't um, advertise the use of auto clicking. But if you do, this is great AFK. You're almost going to get 30,000 XP an hour just from this one spot and clicking here. Or if you're not looking for a click intensive or AFK auto clicker intensive agility course, you can come to the new Colossal War Worm Remains agility course. So this one here, you do need 50 agility or 62 agility for the advanced course. It's much lower intensity than other courses in the game where you click once and then your character actually animates over a bunch of obstacles like here, that first initial type rope. Your character will jump over all of these. So the lower course is here, level 50 at this type rope. And the ladder it goes brings you up to level 62 agility. As you see here, you click on this one type rope. I think you're only going to click on this course six times. You will get about 700 XP for completing the higher level one. See that I click that type rope. 
and then my guy animates over two ropes. So it's pretty good. It's pretty AFK. Herblore, for the most part, is already AFK. It's a bank standing skill. But if you want the most AFK possible, you need 77 Herblore, and you're going to be making stamina potions with the amulet still. I don't know how to pronounce that. Crystals and the super energy potions. So you'll be making 27 potions versus the normal 14 that you usually do with bank standing Herblore. So it uses four crystals per potion. So if I had the right amount of crystals, I would do all 27 of these in my inventory. And obviously, if you're looking for more AFK, you can clean grimy herbs. So just by clicking on one of them, your character will automatically clean all of them. I'm not clicking on them and they're getting cleaned. So you could do this for about 30 seconds at a time and just clean all your grimy herbs for some small but decent amount of XP. And to be honest, it looks like I actually made quite a bit of GP just by cleaning grimy guam leaves. So yeah, you could make some money doing that as well. And there's a fun new method that Jagex introduced into the game in the city center of Voldemort here. So when a child distracts one of the citizens, you can go over to the citizen and pickpocket them for, I think, about 30 seconds of AFK time and just constant 96 XP drop. And you do get these house keys, which is like a mini game type of thieving activity, if you haven't seen it already. So the house is over here on the west side. There are thieving activities and you can enter the house for a few minutes at a time and just loot the chests. It's a little bit of AFK, but you do have to pay attention as the housekeepers, the homeowners actually will return to the house. And if they spot you inside, they will kick you out. And if you are paying attention, you will get bonus XP drops. There will be a blinking arrow. You notice something shine somewhere else in the house and you see that XP drop of 650 XP. This is a pretty chill method for the most part. I mean, I think it gives you about a minute of AFK time at each chest before you can no longer loot from it. And then you do have to move to a different chest in the house. Yep, you'll get this little chat box, box message. You can't uh, spot anything else worth taking. And then a child will whistle outside and you will get this chat box. You hear someone outside and you spot the homeowner coming back. And then you just escape through the window. Turn your valuables in right next to the bank. You can exchange it here with the NPC, and he will give you VP for your valuables. So looting from the houses, you can get about 90,000 XP an hour. It's a little more, bit more click intensive. This one is completely fully AFK. You can pickpocket the wealthy citizen 16 times for that 96 XP every time, like I mentioned, once a boy distracts them. And if you don't have a high enough thieving level, obviously you can come to our doing, our dunge, arty, however the hell you want to pronounce that. Join the clan chat, thieving host. Go over to your settings, um, NPC. You want to hide it so that you can just spam click the arty knight. You get 85, 84 XP every time you do that. I guess I don't advertise auto clicking, but you could somehow set up your camera and just click the general area of where the night is. Now, obviously, you do need to empty your coin pouch, so you do have to pay attention a little bit. Crafting, same with the herb lore, is another AFK bank standing skill already. You can always do 14 items. You could do gems, like 14 items, meaning you can put orbs on top of battle staves, and that's AFK, but it's pretty quick. It's about 30 seconds. We could do glass blowing, so you get a full inventory of 27 items. I think it's about a minute of AFK time. Your character just stands there and blows the glass. And you get a decent amount of XP. Pretty AFK if you're on your phone, watching a movie, working from home, what have you. And again, fletching, just like crafting herb lore, is another bank standing skill. It's already pretty much AFK. But again, if you want to make long bows, short bows, you got 27 items in your inventory that you can AFK for about 30, 45 seconds. You can string them for 14 at a time, which is obviously faster than making the bows, 27 of them at a time. Fletching was actually my first 99. It's pretty easy, pretty chill. You can make some money with it. Pretty AFK. I did it while working from home using this method of just bank standing and crafting long bows and short bows. 
And for a hunter, the most AFK method you can do is using the Kruk Grigri after completion of Monkey Madness 2. You do need 60 hunter and you need to bring some bananas as the bait. I would bring bones to bananas as well because there's a bunch of bones laying around here. So you can only set up one trap at a time, but it does give you a thousand XP. And you just stand here, you click once, you wait till it turns green, you click it again, 1k every time. And if you do want some passive crafting XP, do bring a knife and you can make those damaged monkey tails into snooze. Just collect the bones if you're running out of bananas. You can run around, turn them into bananas, and there's your bait. And you basically never have to leave this area. Now for Hunter, you can also do birdhouse runs. These are quick and easy. It's not really AFK, but it's more so passive XP. There are four birdhouses found on Fossil Island. Just bring with you the best birdhouse that you can use and then some seeds. This is quite possibly the fastest way for me to get 4,000 XP just like that. And I only need to do another 267 birdhouses to get to level 88 Hunter. Now, obviously, one of the best methods in the game is mining shooting stars. This is a great AFK method. You click once and you wait till it's completely depleted, at least the level, and then you click it again and you just continue that cycle. There is a clan chat for this, and there's also a Discord that shouts out the location and the star type, the tier in the world. Do bring your full prospector if you have it, your Celsius ring. And you can bring a glory, and that will give you a higher chance of getting some gems. So you can get that passive crafting XP along with mining. Now, obviously, if you don't like fancy and any shooting stars, you can come to Motherload Mine right here under the Thaldor City. And here you can collect pay dirt from the lower level along with the upper level. You do need 100 gold nuggets to get to the upper level, though. And those are kind of like the veins where they'll deplete after a certain amount of time, not after a certain amount of rocks are mined from it. Now for smithing, you can get a couple minutes of AFK time if you come over to the Edgeville Bank and Furnace and bring a ammo mold and you can make cannonballs. This is not great XP, but it's a good amount of money. It's a decent amount of XP for AFK, not really doing too much. So you have a full inventory of steel bars and ammo mold. I do suggest you to get the double ammo mold from the Giants Foundry mini game if you can complete that. It um I haven't done it, but it's pretty easy and you can be making eight cannonballs versus four. So speeds it up a little bit. But if you're looking for maximum efficiency, well I guess maximum AFK time, just stick with the regular ammo mold. And if you're going for something a little bit better than making cannonballs, you can come and do dart tips so just make the best dart tip that your character can make you'll get a little bit more xp it'll take about the same amount of time and you might make some more money actually with it it's pretty chill pretty afk really close to a bank just like making cannonballs now at 65 fishing you can catch a raw karamwan on karamaja you do need raw karamaji in order to fish these in a karamwan vessel the bait can be found in the middle of karamaja right here next to fairy ring ckr and there's the bait great thing about this is you could just teleport to xanaris with your draman staff equipped and there's a bank in there once here at the bank you can just deposit all your rock rom one and then just head back to the fairy ring and head back out there each trip will take about a couple minutes and give you thirty thousand xp in fishing while well, you're AFK, and you can catch up to 600 fish an hour. And at the Piscatorius fishing colony, you can fish monkfish with a small fishing net, and this does require 62 fishing, and you will catch just over 500 raw monkfish an hour. And again, there's a bank really close by to the fishing spots where you can just deposit. Now with the partial completion of Barbarian Training, you can manage to catch a fish with a new rod. So that new rod is the Barbarian Rod. You do need feathers just south of the Agility Training Arena and the Barbarian Assault minigame. Here you'll find three types of fish you can fish using feathers and the Barbarian Rod. 
Now it's a stand and drop method. So you can actually shift, right click, and swap, left click to drop. Once you do that, you just click on the fish as you would to use it and said you're dropping it. it. Makes it much easier. The great thing about this place is you will be getting passive strength and agility XP along with fishing. Now right here in Berthrub under the pub is one of the closest fires to a bank there is in the game. It's the same exact tile, the fire that's eternal fire here where you can cook your food and the banker who is right next to you, right next to the fire. Another location all players should be able to easily access is the range in Hesidius. Here again is a cooking range just about 8 to 10 tiles away from the nearest bank. And the last cooking spot, if you have Dragon Slayer Part 2 completed, you can come to the Myths Guild. And again, it's the same as Berthrub. The bank and the cooking range are on the same exact tile for a quick, easy convenience. Now, I know burning logs can be a real pain in the ass. And do remember, your character goes from east to west. But did you know, if you add a log to an ongoing fire, you can add log to Bond's fire. And you'll be getting one third of the XP you normally get if you just lit it. Now, an easy alternative to the regular fire making methods is obviously doing the Winter Todd mini game. It's not really AFK, but it is a little more chill with the new update they came out with. As long as you have some warm clothing on, a hatchet, a knife, and some food, you'll be doing just fine in this mini game. You can get upwards of 200,000 fire making XP an hour from this mini game. Woodcutting itself is already pretty AFK. You can chop yew trees at level 60 woodcutting for excessive amounts of AFK time. If you want to come to the woodcutting guild, you do get an invisible plus 7 to your woodcutting level. Alternatively, if you want to go to a forestry world where forestry events will spawn, an event like this where you stand in the rainbow and the next few logs you chop will be bonus XP. So I'm getting 215 XP for a willow log when usually it's 70. Now, last but not least, AFK farming activities. Farming itself is mostly AFK and passive. At 35 farming, you can do teak trees. And at 55 farming, you can do mahogany trees. I highly suggest these as there's four hardwood spots, three on Fossil Island alone. And it's quick XP. Right here, 15,000, 15,000, and 15,000. Just like that, 45,000 XP. And you can just plant them again, pay the squirrel to watch over it, and come back in a few days. Along with your tree runs, I'm sure you already know this, but you can also do herb runs. And once you pick and replant your herbs, you can come back once every 80 minutes for that passive farming XP. There are many types of Regular trees you can plant, fruit trees, and special trees that you can plant in the game. Along with the farming boss, Hispori. If you get a Hispori seed on your tree runs, then you can plant it here and have a chance at getting the pet and some decent XP. You can also complete various farming contracts inside of the farming guild. Guildmaster Jane will give you different types of plants to plant in different tiers from easy, medium, and hard, and you get a reward seed pack at the end of it. The higher level the seed pack, the more expensive the seeds can potentially be, and this one seed pack did grant me over 200k in profit.